Guys, Congress has done a job. That's right. In fact, their only job, which is um, funding the government, making sure it doesn't shut down. Uh, so they did that. That's great. Uh, yesterday, there was an agreement reached that averted a government shutdown. Um, just overall, we are looking at a $1.66 trillion budget. That is $886 billion for defense and $772.7 billion. Ooh, almost as much for non defense spending. So that's how our Militarized America works. You're gonna kill someone. You're gonna not kill someone. I love it. Um, uh, within this, uh, the aid to Israel and Gaza and Ukraine and Taiwan have actually all been separated out. Democrats uh, seem to have compromised, and Republicans are pissed about their compromise. We'll get into that. Uh, Democrats compromise. Um, they basically, uh, uh, the top line is slightly above 1.59 trillion that was reached. Um, so it's 1.66 trillion um, that was reached in a part bipartisan deal last year and includes, includes changes to discretionary spending that was part of a side agreement between President Biden and then House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. And it cuts $6.1 billion in COVID-19 spending and accelerates cuts to the IRS. Um, so remember, the IRS funding is to like uh, have money to spend the thing that Republicans keep on railing about that there's not enough money. Um, but uh, Democrats have capitulated and allowed them to accelerate cuts to the IRS ability to actually go after specifically people with money uh, to say nothing of COVID-19. Democrats say that the COVID-19 funding would not have any impact on programs or projects that are currently in motion. Um, and they said that, uh, same with the IRS cuts that they can make do with those cuts. But remember, uh, every additional dollar that's invested in the IRS generates $6 in return, according to Treasury estimates, by enabling the agency to detect and collect bills already owed and specifically y'all from wealthy people. It is harder to audit people with a lot of means, a lot of accountants, a lot of ways to hide their money. And it's very easy to go after me, mm -hmm. okay, because I didn't make a lot. So if I tried it, you know what I'm saying? It's very easy to go after people like us. But this was the, we averted a shutdown, it seems. GOP is mad, but uh, Ray, thoughts thoughts on this? Yeah, um, it's good that the shutdown was avoided, but the cuts to the IRS are really insidious. And it's insidious the nature in which they are sold to average people. Because as you pointed out, it costs a lot less money for them to audit people like you or me. and. Believe you me, I've, I've thought about not paying my taxes. <laughs> it's hard when you're a contract worker. You have to say all the money you pay towards your taxes, you just gotta put it aside and not touch it. And if you have an emergency, you still can't touch that money because you gotta pay it back come March or April or whenever it is. Um, but but it's sold to regular working class people as though it's good for them. What in the reality is they make more money, as the figures pointed out when they are better funded because they're able to go after those high earners who are actually avoiding paying meaningful amounts of money in taxes. Right. So instead, when tax when the IRS is underfunded, it actually increases their likelihood to go after low income earners. And so it's really insidious to the way that the Republican Party and the Democratic Party to some extent has sold this as a good thing for the average person and try to stoke the fear of the IRS in you know low income earners. Yeah, and it's once again sort of chipping away at Joe Biden's like presidential platform. I mean, part right. of it was funding the IRS and they've sold, I mean, he sold his own platform down the river. I mean, I don't even build back better. They don't even say that anymore. So now again, they're gutting any changes, which was to fund the IRS more. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.